Good morning. It is Lisa Lyons, aka Lady Lily, and I am up getting ready for. Oh, it's a glare. I am up getting ready for Scholarship Mama's virtual playbook webinar. So today, myself, along with several other professionals, are gonna log in and educate and um, prepare um, families and their students um, for college life. Um, so this was free. This was open to everybody. So what I'm going to do today is take you behind the scenes. So it is Saturday, August 8th. So come and check us out. So during this session, do you want us just to mute and disappear or <laughs> when it's not yeah, our we turn? Can, we can like uh, put ourselves on mute and turn off our video so okay. we won't be shown in the, in the broadcast. Mm -hmm. Why do I turn off the radio? <laughs> uh, you, you can just click on stop video. There's like a video icon on Zoom. And then I can I see, also I turn it off. <laughs> there's an icon that says start video, but there's a line through it already. Ah, uh, yeah, because the the mean you you don't have your video on. Oh. Well, now thank you. Yeah, it's yeah. Not. <laughs> it's on hey. Well, now I know how to turn it off. <laughs>
leadership, um, reach out to her through one of those platforms. Um, go, keeping with uh, time, we are going to now present Miss Lisa Lyons. Uh, Lisa holds a bachelor's in English and a master's in science um, in college student personnel, both from West, Western Illinois University. She also completed specialized training in appreciative uh, at advising. Sorry about that. But uh, at this time, I just want to welcome Miss Lyons and um, take it from take it from there. Okay. I, I think Natasha, you have, okay, thank you. Um, so first I want to say um, thank you, Joseph, for the introduction. Um, thank you, Teresa, a.k.a. Scholarship Mama, for um, thinking of me and inviting me on. So um, today I'm talking about um, academic success. I want to start off by saying this, and this goes for whether you're going to enter college, in college, or those who are entering the senior year of high school. I'm going to say this, and it's not on my screen, but college is not hard. I'm going to repeat that. College is not hard. We make it hard. People make it hard. College is not hard. College is a system. And once you learn the system, you can be successful. I'm going to repeat that once again. College is a system. And once you learn the system, you can be successful. So you may hear, well, Lisa, I hear a lot of people go off to college, they drop out, they're, you know, they change their mind. So, so what would you say about that? A lot of people are not successful in college because they lack the following. They lack interest. That can be lack of interest in major, lack of interest in program. They, they lack drive. Do they really want to be there? They lack follow through. And most importantly, they lack commitment. So that's what it's really going to take to, to make it in college. Interest, drive, follow through, and most important, commitment. So uh, with my tips, the first tip I have is learn the system. And what I mean by learn the system what are the resources that are offered on your campus? I know some of these um, pr previous presenters talked about different um, resources on campus, but you need to know what are the resources on campus? Who is your academic advisor? I work as an academic advisor. That person, myself, um, we are going to be your guides to navigate you through this college process in terms of knowing um, what classes you need, uh, what are program requirements, changes that may come in curriculums and program advisors. So knowing your academic advisor, who is your financial aid counselor? Who is that person who can help you um, find more scholarships, discover more money out there? Those are key people you need to, to know. Um, where do you go to to get tutoring or get help from a paper? Where do you go if you're feeling overwhelmed or depressed? We, you know, a lot of colleges and universities have, um, you know, counseling centers. So you need to know what resources are available to you, who are your, gonna be your key people. You need to learn the system. And usually there's so many um, events, um, programs, college courses that tell you about resources and taking advantage of resources. And ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind, guess what? You pay tuition, you're paying for these resources. So you're paying for, you know, the resources in the counseling center. You're paying for the resources in student activities. You're paying for the resources um, through the counseling center. So just keep that in mind. You need to learn the system, learn what's available to you, and learn your resources. Next, you got to establish a routine. College is not the place to be free for all, freestyling. I'm going to figure it out because guess what? You're going to forget. Even me as a working adult, if I don't write it down, if I don't process it in my phone, the tablet, or my planner, because I know that first, our very first speaker said get a, a planner because, yes, technology, things happen with technology. So you have to establish a routine. Get a planner. Create a weekly schedule. One thing I did when I was in college Every Sunday evening, I will map out my weeks ahead. So um, that would include any papers due, any tests due. Um, was there a meeting of a group I wanted to go to? Was there a party? Was there a specific event? Was there a game I wanted to go to, a sporting event? 
So you need to map that out so that way you can plan ahead. So it's like, okay, it's a big event going on, but guess what? I got two papers due. So that means I got to, you know, find some more time or maybe push my, you know, my arrangements up to do these papers sooner because I want to go to this, this event on campus. So create a weekly schedule. Um, you have to be in the know of what is due. Um, there is a homework app called My Homework. A lot of students I work with, they love it because it allows them to plug in their entire semester. So everything is due for every single class. And we always have our phones and tablets. That um, that app will alert you saying, guess what? Your paper's due ten, um, two weeks from now. Your paper's due um, two days from now. Your paper's due two hours from now. So it will send out all these different alerts to let you know what is due. If you plan it to work, how does that incorporate to the work schedule? I know a lot of students, they don't have that luxury where they can just go and focus and be a scholar. They may have to go ahead and get a job. So how does your work schedule uh, reflect? As I tell people, it's the difference between working on campus and working at the local Target. Um, the campus jobs tend to work around your school set schedule. They tend to be more flexible. And it also sometimes affords you opportunities to, you know, do your homework if you're working at a front desk in the office or, you know, you might have a little downtime and you have that um, afforded opportunity versus you go to Target, you are on your feet, whatever your shift is, boom, bam, you're working straight through and you may not have those opportunities. So what is your work schedule? Um, events and activities, as much as we do come to class for, I mean, come to college for academics, you got to have some social, you got to have some interaction with people, you got to have some fun memories to, you know, balance your um, well-being. So what events and activities you want to get yourself in. So establish a time. Um, your schedule won't always be perfect. Um, it's trial and error. So that's why I would say get a planner, work your plan and keep reworking it. You know, whatever you got to do. If you got to have uh, alerts off in your phone, if you have an Alexa app and Alexa got to tell you what to do, you know, do that. But, but try to get a set routine because once you get into a routine, I guarantee, ladies and gentlemen, life is so much smoother. It's so much better when you can move and know what's going on. Um, next, ask questions. I tell students all the time, there is no such thing as a crazy question. The only crazy question is the question that goes unasked. So as I tell people have asked me some of the simple things to the most complex things because they found a level of comfort talking to me. So, um, Ask questions. It could be simple as, you know, I, you know, what is the office hours? You know, something like that. Or where do I go if I do need counseling? Or, you know, if, if I go to a counselor on campus, if it's, is, is it confidential? So any little thing you may have on your brain, ask it. Because the number one thing I hear from freshmen who are not successful, they always say, I did not know. Nobody told me. What did you ask? No. So ask a lot of questions. And another thing, I don't know, it's not an answer. You're, you're, you're coming to college, you're young ladies and gentlemen now. I don't know, you got to be in the know. So I don't know, it's not an answer no more. Find out, ask questions. It's okay to probe and challenge and, and, and ask in an appropriate way. So I don't know, that's not an answer. Um, next, communicate with your professors. It's, it's something... Students are so terrified about college professors. I don't know why. Maybe because they feel like they have all this education and smarts. But at the end of the day, professors are human. They're human. They, their heart beats. They have blood. Their body moves just like ours. So they have, and they have lives outside of academia. So they're, they're human. So you need to communicate with your professors. Um, you know, ask questions. If you're not understanding, it's okay to say, Professor so-and-so, I don't understand. You know, I'm trying to read this material. I don't understand. So it's okay to say you don't get some. Um, a lot of professors, they don't expect you to walk into the classroom being a genius. They don't expect you to walk into the classroom maybe mastering that subject, you know, in particular. So they're open to help you learn and better understand. 
You also want to make sure you're visiting office hours. I know with COVID-19 going on, that might be a little different. It might be more Zooms and maybe phone conferencing. But you want to make sure you are um, visiting or taking advantage of office hours. And for those who don't understand what office hours is, this is a time that the professor um, sets aside outside class means where a student can come and ask questions about a test or assignment or just some materials they are having um, dif um, difficulty in. Um, so yeah, I am just ask questions. And last but not least, because I think my time is ticking, uh, most important to have fun. You know, college years are the best um, years. So um, some of your friendships that you establish in college would be some of your friendships you have for a lifetime. The young ladies I met my first day at Western Illinois University, here we are 20 plus years later, we're still in t contact. I'm the godmother of their children. I've been to weddings, we celebrated each other. So yeah, I'm gonna stop there because I think my time is up. So is there any questions or? If not, I definitely want to encourage you to stay connected with me. Oh, Joseph, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? Oh, no, actually, I was going to ask you to provide your contact information. Okay, so, yes, um, I wrote, actually wrote a book. It's called The Real Deal, A Family's Guide to College, and it talks about um, college access and college admission. So if you do have a senior that's in high school or even if you're that freshman getting ready to get started in college, I will advise you definitely to pick up this book. It is, uh, I'm going to show you, it is a uh, light read. Um, I took this in mind of a high school student. I took this in the mind of a working adult. So it's a quick light read that you can definitely maneuver. Um, you can email me at lisalliance80 at gmail.com. I also have a website www.lisalliance80.com. Um, if you can send me an email or um, subscribe to my website, um, the first two people do that can receive a copy of my book. Um, somebody asked, I'm looking, somebody asked me about um, the, the app. It's called My Homework App. That's the name of the app. It's called My Homework App. Um, depends on how complex you may, it's free. But I think if you wanted to do a little bit more things, you might have to pay the $1.99 or so. But um, the students who have paid for the app said it was worth it because the more deluxe style of it, the more intense you can um, have with the scheduling. Okay. And for our last question, we have from, I believe that's Taza Mayberry. What ways can you work on time management? Um, what ways you can work on time management? Um, as I said, you got to establish a routine. So if you a person who's a big phone person, um, set reminders in your phone, um, get a study, you know, go do this. So you tend to keep your phone with you. And then if you start like really using the phone for that type of stuff, um, it does work. Another thing, set timers. So let's say you have to um, do a paper and you want to give yourself two and a half hours. Set a timer and then know, okay, I got two and a half hours. And the goal would be to beat the timer, um, beat the timer. I mean, I even do that sometimes with housework. If I want to clean the house, okay, I'm going to give myself an hour to clean this one room. And then I'm working against the clock. So it can be the same way as you challenge yourself. And that way, if you put your phone to the side, set that timer, and get going, it can get you in a routine to getting stuff accomplished. Because that goal is, I want to I want to be done before that timer goes off. Or that timer goes off, that lets me know if I'm accomplished or not. So that's like one unique, quick way to get yourself into a routine. Another thing, write it down. Um, nine times a ten, if you write it down, you tend to remember it. So that's another way to help you start to establish better time management skills. And then also don't overcommit yourself. That's another thing. A problem is people want to get involved with everything, do everything. You only can do so much in a 24 hour day period. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Um, again, we do want to thank Miss Lisa Lyons for taking the time out again. Uh, go to our website, sign up, send those emails like she requested. Um, again, for all the raffles, don't forget to like and share the post. Don't forget to send a message um, to post out with Scholars Playbook. 
Um, and Lisa will reach out to you specifically for those who win a copy of her book. Again, let's thank Lisa. Um, again, I thank you guys as we are getting through today. You guys have been with us. You guys have been consistent. Um, we want to keep this energy going. We only have a couple more uh, presentations left for today. Um, we are going to actually move to our next speaker, who is Jessica Smith. Uh, Jessica V. Smith.